Last week I conducted a poll and most of you had voted. I received 703 votes for it. The topic was which video do you want to see next and most of you had selected the microservice architecture pattern using sagas. So in this video we are going to look at how to design microservices architecture using the saga patterns. Let's get started. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. In order to explain the saga pattern, I'm going to leverage the example of Uber Eats. Most of you might know what Uber Eats is. Uber Eats is a food delivery platform using which you can order for food from different restaurants and these food will be delivered by the Uber Eats executives right from the restaurant to your doorstep. Now let's build a hypothetical microservices architecture with Uber Eats in mind. So consider that these are the different microservices which we are going to have in this Uber Eats clone. So there is a UI service. This UI service could be a mobile app or a web application. That's what the user is going to use to create an order so that he can get the food delivered to his doorstep. And the backend services are mostly order service, payment service, restaurant service and delivery service. Let's look at a high level overview of what each service does and then we will try applying the saga pattern in order to implement these microservices. So let's check the UI service. Imagine that the order service is triggered first. So basically an order create is triggered to the order service and order service now triggers the payment service and payment service does the payment for this particular order which the user has placed. As a part of the order service, user selects different dishes from a particular restaurant and he's going to place this particular order for the restaurant before getting the order placed on the restaurant he needs to pay for that particular order and that's what is happening in the second service once the payment service finishes the transaction it notifies the order service saying payment is received and it also proceeds to the restaurant service which needs to go and book this particular order in the restaurant that's what the primary job of the restaurant service is now once the restaurant service finishes booking this particular order in the restaurant, it comes back and updates the order service saying that the order is placed. The additional event which the restaurant service might have is order is prepared and once the order is prepared, now the delivery executive goes to the restaurant, picks the order and then delivers it to the customer. And finally the workflow is completed saying the order has been delivered. So this is a typical example of a workflow what we are going to look at. In order to implement sagas, there are two different ways of implementing it. The first one is called choreography or event based mechanism. So using choreography, you can have events which can interact with microservices and you don't have to have synchronous transaction in your microservices. The other way of implementing sagas is orchestration or command based. So basically there is a central orchestrator which takes care of delegating requests to different microservices. So we are going to see these in detail with an example right now with the same use case. So first look at choreography. So as the name suggests, your microservice is going to perform a particular kind of action or a transaction based on an event. And these are all completely event based. So let's take the same example. We have all the four microservices in place, order service, payment service, restaurant service and delivery service. And these are going to interact using a common queue. So the trigger point for each microservice is basically an event. And let's see what are the different events. Now the first event is getting an order created. So user is triggering an action called order create. And that's what is the trigger point for our order service. The moment order service creates a new order, it publishes an event to a queue, which it is registered to. Now once order service gets the event called order create, it will take an action to create an order and it will publish an event called order created. Now the payment service looks at this particular event called order created and it needs to verify and finish the payment for this particular order. Now the payment service creates an event called order paid. The moment an order paid message is published, both the order service and the restaurant service gets triggered because order service now needs to update its transaction saying the order is now moved from created to paid and the restaurant service identifies, okay, the order has been paid. Now I need to go and prepare this particular order. 
So again, the restaurant service goes and says order prepared once it is completed. And again, the same event is registered by the order service as well because it needs to again update its event. And also the delivery service now registers to the same event. And once the delivery is completed, it publishes an event called order delivered. So this is how a typical choreography works. Every service registers to a common queue and based on the type of action defined for an event, the microservice functions. So in this particular case, the order service is triggered for all the types of events because order service is collating the information about the order and it maintains the state of each order. So it's just updating the status of each order and each individual microservice has different events based on which it has a different transaction and a workflow associated with it. For example, the payment service has to go to the payment system and finish the billing. The restaurant service goes to the restaurant and books this particular order and the delivery service needs to finish the delivery and then update the result back to the order service. So this is called choreography. So this kind of implementation can be applied to any microservices pattern. If you apply the same logic to an e-commerce website like Amazon, the only part which will change is the restaurant service. Instead, you might have a stock validation service which identifies whether the particular item is available or not. So this is how you can use choreography to perform sagas in your microservices architecture. The next one is orchestration. Let's consider the same example. We have the same set of services order service, payment service, restaurant service and delivery service. And the first event is order create. This is again triggered by a UI. In the orchestration, we are not going to call these as events. Instead, we will call them as commands because we are not going to perform a event based orchestration. Instead, we are going to do command based orchestration. Basically, there is a central orchestrator service which is going to control the flow of this particular order and trigger different microservices based on the workflow. For example, the first command is order create and the order service now creates an order and then it pushes the message to the orchestrator service. Once the orchestrator service receives that, okay, order has been created from the order service, which is the message to, it sends the message back to payment service and also it sends one more message back to the order service saying the order has been created, updated and also it triggers the payment service. Now the payment service job is to pay the order. Now it says order paid back to the orchestrator service. So the response from the payment service says, okay, the or order has been paid. Now orchestrator service knows that, okay, the order has been paid. Now it updates the order service saying the order has been paid, please update it. And then it also calls the restaurant service saying the order has been paid, move to the next step of preparing the food in the restaurant. Now again, the restaurant service is going to call back and then say order has been prepared. And then again, there is a message which is going back to the order service and also one more message goes back to the delivery service. And finally, when the delivery is completed, we get an order delivered response and that gets updated in the order service as well. So if you notice, this is a complete orchestration where you have a central orchestrator service. You can name it anything and this controls the whole flow of the message in the microservice. So unlike the earlier pattern where we had events, where every microservice had registered to different events, in terms of orchestration, we have a central service which controls these calls to different microservices. Obviously, there are pros and cons to each particular implementation. For example, in the first case where we had the event based, there could be a case where you can end into a deadlock because one service is dependent on other and what if the other service is again dependent on the other. So if you have very less number of events, it will be very good. But if let's say you have more number of events, there could be a point where you might miss the sequence of the workflow and it might be tedious to test individual microservices and integration tests when you have too many events. In terms of orchestration, there is a single service which is going to interact with different microservices. And now the orchestrator needs to have a mapping on what each service does, which again defeats the purpose of an individual microservice concept where your orchestrator service knows what each service does. And if let's say there is a change in the payment service, it might end up changing the orchestrator service as well. So this is one more pattern of implementing sagas. However, it's up to you to decide which one to go for based on your architectural use case. I hope you understood what are the different saga patterns. These are just two patterns of saga. There are a lot of different patterns which you can evolve from the sagas. In the next video, I'll try to implement this with an example 
the only difficult part is i need to create these individual microservices and then try them first and then i have to show you guys so it might take a while but you can also meanwhile leverage this particular design pattern and then implement it using eureka zool and hystrix and let me know how does it go i hope you got a fair idea of what are sagas in microservices architecture design pattern as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much